When Batman Arkham Knight released back in 2015, it became known as one of the most beautiful games out there in terms of graphics, which is definitely still true even nowadays 9 years later. On PC however, it also became known as one of the worst optimized games ever, with the PC port being plagued oh by lack and stuttering oh, issues on release. I mean, a GTX 970 struggling to run the game, holy sh**. These issues have been largely fixed with updates that followed, but this game still remains one of the most demanding games out there. And guess what? I don't care, because in this video, we're gonna run Batman Arkham Knight on something that is much, much worse than a GTX 970, and we're gonna try to get those sweet 60 FPS whatever it takes. So let's begin! I've decided to try the game on my Lenovo Legion Y520 gaming laptop. I know it isn't exactly a potato laptop, it has an ultra high quality Intel Core i7 and a not too bad 4GB GTX 1050, which is ironically weaker than the GTX 970 I mentioned earlier, but we will not be testing the GTX 1050, oh no. Instead, we will test the i7 C integrated graphics the legendary Intel HD Graphics 630. To ensure that the game is using the Intel HD 630 instead of the dedicated GPU, I will disable the GTX 1050 using the device manager. So what you will be seeing in this video is pure Intel HD Graphics action only. Now, unless you have an old version of the game, what happens when you try to run Batman Arkham Knight on Intel HD slash UHD Graphics is you either get an error after the splash screen appears, or the game instead runs using the Microsoft Render driver as it is in this case. In other words, the Intel HD graphics are just chilling while the CPU is doing all the rendering. We are getting 60 FPS in the main menu, which is 6 times more than what I expected. In game however, we might as well measure the frame rate using the seconds per frame metric instead of the traditional frames per second one. I guess the fact that this 7th gen i7 can render Batman Arkham Knight all alone without frying itself is really impressive, and it shows just how super duper mega giga extreme quality the 7700HQ really is. There is actually a fix to make the game detect the Intel HD graphics, which I will share from the link in the video description. To apply the fix, first go to your game folder, then go to binaries, win64. Then just extract the txgi.dll5 from the fix into that folder and that's it. After applying the fix, in the main menu, we went from 6 FPS to 66 FPS, which is 11 times better than before. Anyway, I'm using the lowest settings allowed by default, the Nvidia game works are disabled of course, and I'm using the measly 640x400 resolution. You can see it down on the bottom right, it says Intel HD Graphics 630, so we're definitely running the game of the Intel HD without a doubt. And guys, I was expecting this to be a total disaster given how notoriously demanding this game is, yet the Intel HD 630 was able to maintain 25 to 35 FPS most of the time even when cruising around with the Batmobile in the most demanding areas. And we did see even higher frame rate in less demanding areas while flying around and even more than 60 FPS when we're looking at the sky. Overall, it is surprisingly playable, but still, I will show you guys what you can do to increase your FPS. Thankfully, Batman Arkham Knight is based on Unreal Engine 3, which, as with almost any game based on that engine, means that it has a config file with a lot of settings that we can modify or disable. The config file for Arkham Knight is located in your game directory, BM Game, config. We are most interested in the bmsystemsettings.ini file, which you can open with notepad as with any other .ini file. Now, the graphics settings seem to be confined to the system settings section only, all the way until this texture group line. And yes, we've got a lot of stuff we can modify here. And after disabling or setting to 0 or 1 whatever we can, the config file should look something like this in the end. I'm not gonna go too much into detail regarding what every option does, because bro, look at how many of them are there. I'm just gonna mention the most important stuff. First of all, you can change the max FPS value from whatever it is set to, to as high as you want. 
If you think the maximum 90 or 30 FPS limit in the old versions of the game is too low, down below are the texture group lines, which control the quality of the textures. Setting their minimum and maximum LOD size values to 1 completely destroys the textures in most Unreal Engine 3 based games, however, in Batman Arkham Knight, I guess it doesn't really work that way. Because even after doing this, the textures, while yes, I think they look worse than before, they aren't, you know, completely destroyed as you see in a while. Also be very careful because setting the maximum LOD size value for the image based reflection group makes the game crash with a fatal error when trying to continue after the main menu. The same thing happens when you set the max multi samples value to zero. Another feature that the config files of Unreal Engine 3 based games have is the screen percentage value, which controls the rendering resolution, allowing you to play in a very low resolution while also maintaining a readable interface. To make it work properly, you also need to set the upscale screen percentage value to true. Well guys, sorry to disappoint you all, but um, look what happens when you try to lower the screen percentage value in Arkham Knight. Hey yo, what the fuck? Not everything must be disabled, however, like the depth of field value. If you set this value to false, it messes with Batman's detective mode, making everybody appear invisible instead of showing their skeletons as it should, which can make missions requiring you to use detective mode much more difficult, so I don't recommend setting the depth of field value to false. I also don't recommend doing the same for the one frame thread lag value, as doing so enables Unreal Engine Freeze anti-input latency mode, similar to Nvidia Reflex or AMD anti-lag, and while yes it can reduce input latency, it also lowers the utilization of your GPU, so you get lower frame rate. And I don't have any input lag in Batman Arkham Knight anyway. And since for some people everything might appear completely dark after breaking the config file according to a few comments that I read in another lag fix video, you might also have to keep the directional light maps value set to true. In my case, setting this value to false doesn't break the lighting, so I'll keep it at false. After doing all the changes, I highly recommend setting the config to read only to prevent the game from reverting a few of the changes. And guys, if you're getting lower frame rates than 15, here's a trick to make the game faster. You can open the bmengine.ini file, then find delta time in notepad, and change the max delta time value from 0.0, .0 whatever to just 0.0. .0. What this changes is, when you're getting less than 15 FPS, instead of the game running in slow motion, you get frame skipping instead. Some people might not like this, so it is up to you on whether you want to change the max delta time value or not. To make it easier for you guys, I made it all into low end configs which you can download from the link in the video description. To apply my low end config mod, first open either the full screen or windowed slash windowed borderless folder depending on whether you want to play the game in windowed slash borderless or full screen, then open one of the available folders depending on what resolution you want to play the game at, then extract the config file that you chose from the mod and replace the original one. I also included a modified bmengine.ini file if you want frame skipping. Now, this is quite important. Did you guys know that Batman Arkham Knight has another config file, but this time it's located in documents, Warner Bros games, Batman Arkham Knight. The config file that I'm talking about right now is this GFX settings.ini file, which you can open with notepad once again. Now listen carefully here. If you want to play the game in full screen, then you need to change the display mode value to true and also change the resolution X and Y values to the resolution you want to use. If you want to play in windowed borderless, then you have to set the display mode value to 1, but you don't need to modify the resolution values. And if you want to play in normal windowed, then change the display mode value to 0, but it's once again necessary to change the resolution values for the resolution you want. We won't be modifying anything else here since there isn't anything that can give us an extra performance boost. If 
you're wondering on whether you should be playing in full screen, windowed borderless or just windowed, this is how the game runs in full screen, windowed borderless and finally windowed windowed. So yeah, the game runs the best in full screen, but one cool thing about the windowed and windowed borderless mods is that they allow you to use custom resolutions even if your GPU doesn't support them. Take a look at how the game looks at the 960x540 resolution for example, or how about the 200x200 one. Yeah, you can do a lot of experimenting for yourself with different resolutions, but anyway, using the low end config mod at the slightly lower resolution of 512 by 384 which is the lowest resolution that you should be using for the interface to be readable, in full screen mode, we're now getting 30 to 40 fps when driving around with the Batmobile, with almost any drops below 30 having been eliminated even in the most demanding areas, and we did see 50 to 60 plus fps quite often when we were on foot beating up ducks or flying around in less demanding areas. We could even reach 100 fps when looking at the sky now. The graphics aren't really that different compared to before, although there are a few changes. Some objects now appear very close in front of you, which is most noticeable when you're driving the Batmobile, and the textures, while yes, they look noticeably worse compared to before, as I told you earlier, they aren't like one color blobs or something like that. But, the big boat, you didn't test Vulcan. Oh, actually I did. I used the DX Vulcan mod featured in that Batman Arkham Knight on the Intel HD5 training video to apply the mod, just extract the two DLL files from the mod into the Win64 folder in your game directory and replace the DXGI.DLL file with the one from the Vulcan mod if you use the Intel iGPU fix that we applied in the beginning. To compare the performance between the default DirectX 11 API and with the Vulcan mod, I run the built-in benchmark with both APIs. Here's the result in DX11 and here's the result in Vulcan. And before I get a comment saying that this is fake, I disabled the override group name thingy for the frame rate counter in MSI Afterburner and you can see that it is indeed running in Vulcan here. The same thing goes for actual gameplay. The drops below 30 fps are now worse than with stock low settings in DirectX 11 and even after exploring Gotham City for a while, waiting for the shader compilation to finish, there was still some stuttering. Hell, I couldn't reach 100 fps when looking at the sky anymore for god's sake. So is DX Vulcan really that magical thing that gives a lot of fps? Well no, apparently DX Vulcan is a piece of crap. To remove DX Vulcan from the game, return back to the Win64 folder, then delete that cache file, as well as both of the log files and both the D3D11 and DXGI DLL files. Finally, unless you are a 1 frame per eternity gigachat, put back the old DXGI.DLL file from the Intel GPU fix from the beginning. As for some lossless scaling, well, it is actually possible, with the FPS cap to training using River Tuner and using the Aeros 1 scaling type, which is very lightweight on Intel HD graphics that also looks decent, and Aeros FG 2.3 mode X3 for the frame generation for 60 FPS. Keep in mind that you will have to use normal windowed mode because the performance in windowed borderless is really awful. There are some drops below 20 slash 60 fps when the utilization of the Intel HD 630 becomes maxed out in those really intensive areas, however the artifacting wasn't too bad and there wasn't really any input latency despite upscaling from 20 fps. Upscaling from 15 to 60 fps with mode X4 is also possible with the stock low settings, or in fact even higher settings as we saw in this video, as well as perhaps a slightly higher resolution, but by that point the artifacting becomes so awful that yeah, it's just not really worth it. So as it turns out, Intel HD graphics can run Batman Arkham Knight at 60 fps, which is honestly quite crazy to think about. Ok, now that we know that this incredibly demanding game runs at 60 fps on the Intel HD 630, it's time to test it on something that's beyond potato.
Yep, this is my extremely slow Lenovo Idea Pad 115 IBY laptop, which has the Intel Celeron N2840 that is slower than CPUs from freaking 2006, and the Intel HD graphics page rail that make the GT710 look like RTX 4090. I had to resort to using Windows 7, and this is not even normal Windows 7, this is modified ISO with several features disabled to make it even more lightweight. I also decided to use this memory reduct app to free up as much RAM as possible for the game to use, because this laptop has measly 4GB of it, which is not really enough for Arkham Knight. I even went as far as disabling the bloody explorer.exe process right after double clicking the game icon. And guys, you won't believe this, but after waiting like 10 minutes in a black screen, eventually we were in the main menu. After loading into my safe, and yes, I had to play through the beginning of the game on the N2840 to get to this point, by the way, this time I only had to wait around a minute for it to load, this is how it initially was at freaking 1 FPS with freezes that can take up to a minute, but eventually, after suffering through for a little bit, the game did end up stabilizing itself and we were getting perfectly playable 4 to 8 FPS when driving with the Batmobile, with the occasional pause with the rotating Bat logo because this hardware couldn't really load new areas properly in time. You could, however, see double digit frame rate when not food doing your usual beating up bad guys work, you know, or flying around while enjoying the pixelated Gotham City. I once saw as high as 26 FPS when looking at the sky. By the way, I'm playing this with a low end config mod plus modified BM engine.ini file and a super crispy and highly detailed free training by 200 resolution. Also, I'm using Fabs just because it's more lightweight than MSI Afterburner, and we are really desperate here. So yeah, apparently, a Celeron toaster that gets destroyed by 18 year old Korchu duos can open Batman Arkham Knight. Is it playable, however? Well, not really. And I guess that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me run this notorious PC port on something that struggles to handle YouTube videos at 720p. You can also check out my Assassin's Creed Origins Lagfix video, where I managed to open that game on the same Celeron as in this video. Otherwise, I wish you all a very good day.